Unit 8, Part 2, Growing Conditions. The first part of this unit dealt with land availability and some possible issues with land availability in urban areas. Now we're going to deal with growing conditions. Plants need three main things in order to grow. Nutrients, water, and light. In an indoor hydroponic or aquaponic system, all of these things can be supplied in the proper amounts to the plants. It depends on the expense one is willing to go through. When growing outdoors in the ground, we can control nutrients by adding them when necessary. In most cases, we can control water, irrigating if required, but light is one requirement that we might not be able to supply. Nutrients. Nutrients can be supplied in the form of compost, worm castings, or fertilizer, um, as well as other ways, as uh, compost tea and that sort of thing. Um, if proper plant selections are made and crop rotation or companion planting is done properly, the need to add nutrients can be reduced, usually not eliminated when we're talking about relatively intensive agriculture, but we can greatly reduce the need to add outside inputs. Um, maintaining proper soil condition, that is the proper texture and structure of soil, um, helps make the nutrients more available to plants. It also helps with uh, water usage for plants and helps prevent runoff and that sort of thing. Amending soil can, can improve its condition, its nutrient holding capacity, and its drainage. We can usually modify even very poor soil enough to make it quite suitable for growing crops. And with proper growing practices, the soil will actually improve year after year. Water. Agriculture is the world's largest consumer of water. In the United States, as much as 70% or more of our water usage goes to agriculture. Some estimates put it as high as 85%. Much of the water used in agriculture is used in ways that do not maximize its effect and cause tremendous losses of water through evaporation and runoff. Amending soil to improve its water retention and drainage can mean having to use less water. Improving water delivery to plants by the use of drip or subsurface irrigation makes providing water much more efficient than overhead methods. Capturing water runoff from roofs and paved areas for use in irrigation also aids in efficient water use. In most cases, by combining natural rainfall with properly applied irrigation, we can provide the plants with adequate moisture to grow well. One thing not mentioned in this slide that deserves a mention, I think, is proper plant selection. Sometimes plants, even the same type of plant, have vastly different requirements for water. There are varieties of corn that need much less water than other varieties of corn. So proper plant selection Proper, proper crop selection, species, and varieties within species is very important to make maximum use of water. Finally, for this section, last slide, light. Light is the one thing we have little control over in urban settings outdoors. We can do obvious things like trimming trees to reduce shade, but if a potential site is shaded by tall buildings, we can't do a lot to increase the amount of light available, though there are a few things we can do that will help a bit. As mentioned, keep the trees trimmed to limit shading. Paint fences and surrounding buildings white or a very light color to maximize reflected light onto the growing area. This can actually make a huge difference 
depending on the angle that the light comes from, uh, it can make the difference between being very successful and not being very successful. But beyond those things, there isn't much more we can do. So this makes proper crop selection for each site extremely important. If we can't increase light levels, we need to grow crops that can tolerate the light levels that we have. It's easy enough to look up particular crops and their required light levels um, and plan your urban agriculture project around those things that will do well under the conditions you have. Um, most leaf crops, lettuces and arugula and things like that, uh, spinach, can do fairly well, even very well, in quite low light. Um, other crops, such as sweet corn, not so well. They need a lot of light. So proper crop selection, based on the amount of light as well as other conditions, uh, extremely important. And that concludes the presentation for Unit 8.